Hi, everyone. Welcome on this PFC public consultation webinar. Today, we will talk about uh, the Estonian for Certification System. My name is Hubert Tinheiser. I'm a technical officer at PFC International, and I'm very happy to be your host on today's webinar. Uh, the today event uh, have the same agenda item and the other public consultation webinars. I will uh, have a brief introduction about PFC International for those who are not that familiar uh, with uh, or structure and organization. And I'm very happy to have Yves Reban here uh, with us, who is the CEO of the Estonia Forest Certification Council, and she will uh, guide us through on the Estonian Forest Certification System. And of course, at the end, uh, if we have anybody uh, for clarification questions and so on, we are happy to take them on board. So let's start with uh, PFC International. The acronym stands for Program for the Endorsement of Forest Certification Systems. We are an alliance of independent national forest certification systems under the umbrella of PFC International. All of these uh, national forest certification systems are based on PFC's sustainability benchmark standards or international standards. This is a voluntary mechanism promoting sustainable forest management through independent third party certification. We are very happy that we are the world's largest forest certification system and provider more than 75% of the world's certified and sustainably managed timber. On this map, you can see uh, our global coverage uh, with uh, the number of hectares and the number of uh, chain of custodies, what we have across the globe. Now, just a couple of words before we start uh, uh, with the detailed system presentation about the Estonian Forest Certification System, which was submitted in May uh, this year for assessment. Uh, the assessment is going to look into whether or not and at how uh, extent the Estonian Forest Certification System complies uh, and delivers conformities with the PFC uh, standards. This assessment uh, will be carried out by an independent assessor yet to be appointed. Uh, and part of this assessment, we are uh, open uh, 60 days uh, public consultation. We just uh, started these 60 days today on the 15th of August. So we encourage all stakeholders to take a look at the Estonian uh, system documentation and uh, let us know uh, documents or feedbacks if there's any uh, until 13th of October. It's very important for us to be this, uh, to uh, make this documentation publicly available because all these comments submitted to PSC International during this period of time uh, will be considered by the assessor in the assessment report. And now I think that's it from my side and let's, uh, let us look into the Estonian Forest Certification System. I stop uh, sharing my screen and I would like to ask you Eve to start sharing yours and guide us through the Estonian system. Thank you. Hello everybody. Thank you. you can uh, see my, my it looks great you can go ahead thank you um i'm uh, eva rebonne and i am the ceo and national secretary of PFC Estonia, and it's my pleasure to introduce you the Estonian certification for sustainable forest uh, management uh, first i would like to give you um, a brief overview of the Estonian forestry sector and the Estonian forest certification system. And uh, then I will describe our uh, sustainable forest management standard setting process. Um, Estonian Forest Certification Council, or PFC Estonia, as we call it too, implements 
the PFC principle in Estonia. The PFC is a non-profit organization and it's established 20 years ago, 2001, and we are a member of the PFC International. Uh, we have uh, 12, uh, 12 members in our organization, um, a wide range of stakeholders representing forest owners, industry, uh, workers, university, and also certification bodies. Uh, here you can see the uh, overview of resources. Blue is the total forest areas in the state and in uh, private forests and both. And the green is a PFC uh, certified channel. You can see that approximately half of uh, Estonian forests are certified. Mm, the certified forest area has grown moderately from year to year. And the sharp increase in uh, 2010 uh, shows that the state, uh, state forest management center has got a PFC forest management certificate. Um, Estonia is a forest country and half of the Estonian territory is covered with forest, which is about 2.3 million hectares. And uh, one third is uh, cultivated land and natural grassland. From there, about half is classified as violent agricultural land. Um, half of the forest is managed by the state, uh, mainly by state forest management center and also some ministries and local governments and schools. And second half belongs to the private forest owners. And there are approximately 100,000 uh, physical uh, private forest owners and uh, 6,000 uh, uh, companies. And stone forests are, are very different and diverse in terms of structure and uh, site. Um, the management of our forests has not been consistent due to historical reason after World War II, and that influences the state of forests as uh, the choices we have today. Uh, forest land area has increased moderately during the uh, last 70 years, about 1 million hectares, and mainly due to natural afforestation of abandoned farms, agricultural lands, meadows, pastures. But all these uh, forests has, um, reach, have reached the cutting edge uh, now. Mm, the total growing stock, uh, growing stock per hectare, as well as the annual increment, has uh, uh, been increasing gradually. It shows that also good management uh, practices has were made in the forest. For example, high quality forest cultivation materials used. And thinnings and other various forest management techniques are increase the share of uh, high quality wood from the forest, uh, which can be used to make long, long life products that store carbon. Uh, the amount of protected forest areas has increased in time. The total share of protected forests is high, 25%, and the share of strictly protected forests where no management is allowed, it's also high, about 14%. All allowed activities in limited management zones uh, are stipulated in site specific protection rules. Every activity is assessed and compliance is confirmed by the uh, environmental board. Mm, the biodiversity is protected uh, through several obligations uh, when performing failings. For example, obligations to leave retention and decrease, limitations to avoid disturbing soils, and so on. Over the last decades, the amount of dead wood left in the forests has doubled in Estonia, as well as uh, low stumps are usually left uh, to the felling place undisturbed. Uh, the forestry regulations ensure um, efficient. Uh, consistency of forest re regeneration, appro appropriate tree species, and the forest area has constantly uh, been increasing. 
um, Estonia forestry um, strategy and regulations follow the principles of uh, sustainable forest management. We have a good uh, framework for forestry legislation. There's a high number of different laws and regulations that forest owners and uh, chain of custody companies shall follow. Appendix 2 of the Sustainable Forest Management Standard contains a list of the most common uh, legislation. Uh, management rules are strict with limitations to felling areas and rotation ages. Uh, there is an obligation to leave retention decreased dead. Uh, and owners must ensure that the felling areas regenerate the property. Forest Act specific uh, rules for that. And the Estonian Environmental Board executes supervision regarding the use of natural resources. This also includes forest management operations and uh, timber extraction. All these activities must be in line with the national legislation. The minimum requirement for forest management and timber harvesting is the exist uh, existence of forest data in the National Forest Register. Usually forest management plans are ordered together with the inventory data. For regeneration fellings, sanitary cuttings and commercial things, a harvesting notice has to be obtained from the environment report, indicating that plant activities align with the rules and regulation. Uh, here you can see the continued trend. The felling volume has been smaller than the increase of growing stock. The forest growing stock has uh, uh, risen gradually due to both increase in uh, forest land area and its uh, average age. Due to the high proportion of major forests, sustainable management is needed to increase carbon sequestration capacity. Also, older forests are more prone to storms, diseases and fire and uh, their ability to sequestrate carbon is much lower than uh, that the forest is an optimal uh, growing stage. Uh, considering the age of structure, species composition, land use history, growth models and future projections, our managed forests timely and appropriate renewal is extremely important uh, for both sustainable land use and long-term climate targets. We extended the scope of the sustainable forest management standard. And here I explain why we made such a decision. Uh, we have areas with trees that are not defined as woodlands. Uh, for example, plantations, which we have uh, 6,000 hectares. There is interest to increase uh, those areas. We have overgrown agricultural lands, which are not valuable and will not be restored for agricultural purposes. We have um, overgrown permanent grasslands and cultivated grasslands and watered meadows, which need to be managed. More than 100,000 hectares of semi-natural habitats are used extensively, which are highly appreciated soon for the high biodiversity value and the heritage uh, land cover type. Many of these areas have an abundance of trees. But these habitats need to be restored and maintained by clearing them of trees and bushes. And this removal improves the biodiversity and cultural value of these habitats. We have drainage ditches and roadsides also to be maintained. And it means remove woody biomass that is mostly low, low quality wood and therefore used mainly for energy and uh, heat production. Um, to ensure the sustainable management of future resources, it is necessary to create opportunities for this. The certification of trees growing on uh, non-forest lands is one way to prove the reach of the material entering the supply chain. It is also required by European Union biomass sustainability criteria and other regulations. Uh, for the substitution effect to take place sustainably, 
it is necessary to include material that meets the sustainability requirement in the chain. The demand for sustainable biomass, whether it comes from the forest or other land, is increasing globally and nationally. Companies are revising the sustainability criteria and environmental policy and creating a sustainability chapter in their business strategy. Um, the role of forests in mitigating climate change is crucial. Certification of trees growing in non forest land supports the energy and climate growth uh, globally and locally. It is known that the heat and uh, energy production from renewable resources shall increase. This extension supports the market entry of low risk and high impact uh, resources. The standard allows landowners to remove market barriers to the sale of material and to market wood in compliance with the sustainability criteria set for using biomass or the energy companies themselves. Uh, this increases the amount of sustainable material produced on the market. Uh, Woody biomass as a renewable uh, raw material plays a vital role in ensuring national energy supply security and a significant part of the material used in energy production is already renewable today. The share of re renewable energy in district heating was 63%, which has increased sig significantly over the years and shows a stable growth trend. Uh, more than half of local heating devices use uh, firewood and wood pellets as fuel, and the share of renewable fuels has been increasing over the years. Um, the green part is a wood, and one third is heat pumps, that are the orange, and the gray area is the natural gas. So the a significant portion of woody biomass enters the market from sources other than forest land, and the need for wood from responsible resources is growing, and PFC creates an opportunity for the traceability of such material and compliance with um, requirements. Some words about the economics and the share of wood wooden and prefabricated buildings, pulp and paper products uh, is 17% of the total export, which shows that the forest sector is a very important pillar of the Estonian economy. There are 31,000 direct jobs in the forestry sector, and the wood industry is one of the largest employers in the process in the industry. Main export countries are uh, mainly Scandinavia, but also Germany, Netherlands, Denmark, UK, and the main export articles are wooden prefabricated buildings, construction parts, stone wood, pellets, and uh, the most significant part of the import of wood based products is uh, stone wood. So I, I will introduce the certification system and uh, also talk about uh, the standards. Estonia Forest Certification Scheme includes uh, standards for forest management and uh, uh, requirements for certification bodies operating the forest management certification and also different guides um, like uh, issuing PFC trademarks, use licensing, notification and how to deal with complaints and appeals. Now, the standards have been revised mainly as a result of the changes made in the benchmark standards. And as you can see, the numbering of the standards has changed and all documents were revised during the two and a half years. Um, the first document we started, we reviewed and revised January 2020 for standard setting standard, just before starting to revise the sustainable forest management standard. Uh, the standard um, 
specifies rules for the standard setting process, standard working group and steering group, which institution was added to the standard. And uh, the mayor change um, was specifying the procedure for reaching the consensus. Uh, ISO high level structure and design have been taken as the basis and new standard um, replacing the existing Annex 11. Um, in Estonia, a significant part um, of the forest belongs to small forest owners, and uh, group certification is uh, the most suitable approach for to forest certification in the context. Uh, we set up um, working group two to revise the group forest management certification standard. Um, in the interest of clarity and better traceability, the requirements of the existing standards PFCS2 and S3 have been concentrated into one standard. And the standard introduces changes in various uh, chapters, um, like in the support chapter, in the internal audit chapter. There are a lot of new definitions in the new standard and more detailed requirements for the group entity and group members. And uh, the new standard also gives a list which requirements of sustainable forest management standard can be implemented on a group level. Mm, the forest management standard is a normative document for forest owners. The implementation of the standard gives the right obtain a PFC forest management certificate. This standard helps forest owners to be an efficient manager of the forest and also increases public awareness of sustainable forestry. The standard has been revised as a result of the changes made in the benchmark standard. And uh, the new standard follows the process focused approach. For every requirement we have in standard, there are also example indicators. Some examples of what the forest owner should be showing to the certification body or what kind of evidence to prove uh, compliance with requirements. These indicators make owners easier to understand what their requirements mean. And they are helpful to auditors and helps to harmonize the level of auditing as well. Mm, it's also said in the standard, that the use of the um, indicator in the audit shall be up to date and relevant and based on the forest type, the purpose, the work, the history of land use, other uh, characteristics. There are also more aspects related to biodiversity. The standard includes two appendixes. Appendix one uh, for specifications for plantations and other man made cultural non forest land. And appendix two contains a list of uh, applicable legislation. Uh, the thing distinguished between large and small forest owners have been uh, repealed, meaning all clauses of the standard apply to all those obliged to comply with the standards requirement. Uh, the specific character of forest land ownership, um, like size, location, forest management uh, objectives, applied practices and the intensity of forest use has been taken into account in the development of the standard. Um, Yes, the standard includes more aspects related to biodiversity and that would enable the knowledge in forestry to create greater diversity in nature. For example, buffer strips and groups of retention trees have been preferred. Some trees, shrubs and other plants valuable for pollinators like willow, linden oak, maple, wild raspberry have been uh, left to grow. We see that the revised standard provides an opportunity to take a holistic approach to forest management. Um, and the scope of the standard has been extended and uh, the standard can also be applied uh, to semi-natural non-forest land plantations and other man-made cultural non-forest land. 
the requirements established for um, forest and forest land also apply to semi-natural forest land. They are, for example, wooded meadows, overgrown permanent grasslands, wet meadows, juniper stands, etc. And um, specifications for management of plantations and the trees growing on man-made cultural non-forest land are provided in the note in the standard requirements if applicable and in one next Annex one, where is the table with the list of specifications? Uh, these areas can be, I guess, plantations, but uh, arable land and cultivated grasslands, which, which are overgrown with trees and uh, shrubs, <coughs> and so on. For example, while we are managing plantations, the requirement in that paragraph uh, shown in the slide does not necessarily apply. And that ecologically important st structural elements shall be maintained while carrying out forest management work to preserve biodiversity. While the plantations are usually fast growing trees, the short cutting cycle, their management difference differs from uh, forest management. Mm. In the interest of clarity and a better traceability, uh, the requirements for certification bodies regarding forest management application, uh, requirements from existing standards EFC S2, S3 and 4 have been consolidated into one standard. And the new standard focuses only requirements for certification bodies on forest management certification. Requirements for the chain of custody certification are omitted. They are introduced in the International Standard 2003. Uh, most significant change is in the qualification requirements for auditors, where we introduced a requirement of two years of work experience in forestry. And there are some other minor specifications as well in this new standard. Uh, some, a new guide replaces existing standard issuance of PFC logo uh, licenses. And uh, this procedure has been updated on the basis of the specified uh, new procedure of the PFC company. And um, that the structure and design of the international guide have been taken as the basis. Minor changes have been made in the license application process, for example, contracts by different categories uh, have been thrown up. Uh, some minor specifications have been made in the notification procedure, chain of custody and uh, uh, forest management certification reporting forms has been updated. And uh, regarding guide 1007 uh, complaint and appeal settlement procedure, uh, requirements from the 2015 standards S2 and S4 have been consolidated on document. Um, and no major changes have uh, been introduced there. Uh, like during the last revision, uh, we adopted fully uh, chain of custody related standards so their certification is operated. the standard setting process uh, as well. Here we can see the milestones um, and the board of Estel um, in October 2019. A cap analysis was carried out and as a result it was established that several international benchmark standards and guides their structure have changed and new requirements have been added and several existing requirements have been uh, specified. Uh, 
uh, to ensure that the involvement of all interested groups in the process, we mapped the stakeholders. Um, although Agenda 21 identifies indigenous people as the key stakeholder group, um, it was found that um, since there were no indigenous peoples in Estonia, they could not be mapped as a key interest group. But it was important to involve uh, local governments as a key stakeholders in the process because of their role in developing and enforcing data planning and green networks. During the revision process, three new members were added to the working group um, to energy and heat producers, associations, and the voluntary conservation system. Uh, since it was necessary to ensure our certification schemes compliance with the requirement of international benchmark standards, the general meeting in early 2020 decided to start a full revision of the scheme. That was an easy decision. A public announcement of the revision of the scheme was published on our website on end of January 2020 and an invitation to participate in the revision process of the forest management standard was sent to 48 organizations and to all mapped stakeholder groups. There were no comments on the scope of the standard nor standard setting procedure. The board established a working group on March 9, 2020, consisting of representatives of various stakeholder organizations. And the working group proposed amendments to the standard setting standard, which the board subsequently approved. Mm, during the working group meetings, additional experts when, were involved in the standard setting process, asking for uh, expert opinions from uh, university, ministries, government agencies, and, and from industry side. Um, here you can see an overview of members of the standard working group. There were 32 members from 30 organizations in the working group. And we had also three um, certification bodies and accreditation body as well in our working group, but they didn't participate in the consensus meeting because of the principle of impartiality and independence. They didn't have the right to vote. Uh, the working group was very active and detailed, uh, detailed in its work that all sentences that were written into the standard during the meetings were already a consensus. It was easy in the latter process. Now, in the period of 25 months, from March 2020 to June 22, um, 32 working group meetings took place. Most of them were virtual long days meeting where average 15 members attended every time, which is an excellent result for such a long and substantial process. It showed the strong support of the forest sector to, to the PSC. Um, Public, the first public consultation took place from October to December uh, 21, and that was announced in a press release, our webpage, and sent to all stakeholders identified during the stakeholder mapping, including the organizations that were not part of the standard working group. And we received eight respondent, uh, respondents, and they gave 31 comments uh, in, in total. The working group discussed the, uh, those comments during the three meetings afterwards. Um, the proposed changes to the forest management standard were mostly only minor changes or specification. Uh, yeah. During the public consultation period, uh, we ran a webinar for forest owners and other stakeholders and we introduced the principles and requirements of the revised standard, and we focused on the biodiversity conservation 
techniques in the example of the new standard. We also presented the amendments to the standard draft to various stakeholders by giving presentations in their trainings. Uh, the second um, public consultation was carried out from March to April 22 to receive feedback on the requirements for the scope extension, certification of the trees outside forest. An invitation was sent out a total of 73 people, all, um, including organizations that had not nominated a representative at the work group, and no comments were received on the required draft standards. Mm, the pilot testing was carried out in terms of the auditability of the requirements for the certification of trees outside forests. And the pilot was carried out by an independent accredited certification body uh, from March to April this year. Audit report finds the sustainable forest management standard auditable, accessible and unambiguous and can be successfully used for the certification of trees outside forests. Um, the audit report set out some of the recommendations and minor issues discussed by the working group at its April meeting this year. Um, at the meeting um, on April 2022, the working group agreed on the content of the standard, sustainable forest management standard, reached a consensus on the decision on the sustainable forest management standard and submitted it to the board uh, for approval. The board and uh, the general meeting of the PFC Estonia approved the sustainable forest management standard and other scheme documents at a meeting on 4th uh, May. And we have, uh, as we have two certification bodies as members, uh, they didn't participate in voting and approving because of the impartiality and independence. Afterwards, on uh, 6 May, we sent, we submitted the scheme to the PFC Council for endorsement. The initial deadline was actually 14 November 2021, but due to the COVID-19, PFC Council extended the revision period for six months. The date of the entry into force of the standards and procedures is hopefully May next year. It depends on the endorsement process and uh, the transition date is planned for 4th May, the year after that, 2024. Uh, guidance for issuing trademark licenses and notification procedures, guides 1005 and guide 1006 entered into force already on June this year, so the transition period did not apply to them. Mm. The date of the next periodic review is a 4th, 4th May um, 27. Uh, the documents were published on our website on 5th May. And uh, due to the initial review of the documents, uh, by PFC International considered necessary to modify the structure of the standard. No substantive changes were made to the text and the working group discussed amendments and the steering group reached the consensus of the changes at the meeting on 1st June, um, after which it was decided to submit to the PFC Estonia board for approval. And the board and general meeting approved um, amendment at the meeting of, of uh, June 2022, which doesn't influence the time for documents to enter into force and the transition date. They may um, they remain the same. The whole process of the scheme revision has been documented. And a sub page was created on our website for the standard revision process. All materials 
agendas, minutes, uh, list of working group members, background materials, all were published on that website. So I think that's all from my side. And thank you. And here was my view about the Estonian um, forest certification system and how our revision process went. Thank you for listening. I'm happy to take your questions. Thank you very much, Eve, for this well-structured and very detailed presentations. I'm sure I will look, look it uh, uh, up uh, more times on a YouTube channel because it was really well, well structured and uh, especially the details about the forestry sector was very interesting for me. And just before uh, opening up for uh, questions, just a qualification for those who, who, who watched it that uh, so at the end, basically, this uh, June amendment included that you didn't mobilize uh, the trees outside forest appendix in the system documentation. Right? Yes, yes. We, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. That's that's the only thing which, if if all, if only the assessor is also watching it, just to make sure that this is this is clear. And now um, uh, I would like to open the floor for any questions uh, from the audience. Maybe maybe I think it was maybe uh, too much <laughs> for for such a short period of time, uh, too many information, but I think it was, uh, it was again, uh, very well structured. And I think if there's no uh, clarification questions for now, I can just invite uh, both the participants and those who watch this to take a look at the complete uh, Estonian system documentation on our uh, website. And please remember that you can submit your comments uh, on the documentation until 13th of October. Uh, if, it was great to have you with us today on this webinar. And uh, if there is no, I don't see still uh, no questions from the audience. With this, uh, again, thank you for preparing this for us. And uh, for everyone, I wish you a nice rest of the day. Thank you, Hubert. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye bye.